Today we are interviewing Ann Kleinfelder, who is the Associate Professor of Law and Director of the Catherine R. Everett Law Library at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Ann, I believe those watching or reading this interview would like to know a little bit about you personally. For example, could you begin by telling us about where you were raised and about your family, both when you were young and today? Then perhaps, could you tell us about your education, including where you went to college, library school, and then to law school? All right. <laughs> this is my life. Um, I was uh, raised in a small town in northeast Alabama, Anniston, Alabama. It's between Birmingham and Atlanta. And um, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, a period of great social change, um, particularly in that part of the world. Um, I had uh, a lot of support for my interests at that time. I was very interested in reading and a lot of creative um, interest in playing the piano, painting, and so I enjoyed my, my childhood there. My father was a lawyer and um, also interested in history, so he had a nice collection of books. My mother was an English teacher and she was interested in archaeology and a number of other things too, so my interest in reading was certainly encouraged by my parents. And one of the major events of my childhood that was unusual for me was to spend a couple of summers in Venezuela with um, aunt and uncle who were living there as my uncle was an engineer and so I got exposure to a whole new culture and gained some ideas about possibilities beyond Calhoun County, Alabama. When I went to high school, I uh, was thinking with an eye towards college. It was always assumed that I would go to college and looked around to see what, what might interest me. I ended up going to Auburn, Alabama for a year to study architecture, which was highly unusual for my family. A big Alabama fans and that's a huge rivalry so I was a little bit of a black sheep for a while I say for a while because I only stayed for a year and then transferred to Alabama um, moving away from something that was more engineering oriented to the humanities I double majored in English and Spanish and um, cast about for a little while to think of what was next um, considered being a teacher considered for a while I was in the Latin American Studies graduate program, but eventually found my way to law school. I was sort of at the last minute running around trying to figure out how I could take the LSAT. So I had to at that point pay a drop-in extra fee because I hadn't planned ahead. But I loved taking the, the test and actually went to the law library afterwards because I was so enthusiastic about law and that experience. I only applied to the University of Alabama, that's where I was at the time, and so that's where I went. And the rest of my education, so mine's an unusual um, combination of steps. I went to work for a defense firm in Huntsville, Alabama after my first year of law school. And I was not thrilled with the prospect of practicing law after that. They were a terrific group. I'm very welcoming of me, but I found that it was very combative, and it was also a huge drain. I, I didn't see why this was anybody's prize. So I wrote a letter to the law school and said, uh, although I'll miss the intellectual stimulation of my professors and peers, I won't be returning in the fall. I miss my family, my friends, my fingernails, and Faulkner. And they called me up and uh, said, oh, you, you usually someone wants to leave after the first year, we try to dissuade them, but frankly, we were convinced. So they were very kind to me about that and um, apparently dined out on that letter for, for quite a while, I found out later. So in the meantime, afterwards, I found my way to a student position in the main library where I worked for some time and was uh, recommended by one of the librarians to consider librarianship, which I thought was 
not at all my line at that time. It's kind of funny. So eventually, though, I did end up um, going to library school and worked at the main library for four years. After that, I decided I wanted to develop some expertise as a librarian, and so I went back and said, may I come back to law school? This was seven years later, somewhat irregular for today's standards, I think, but they did welcome me back. I don't know if they were waiting for me to write another letter they thought they could dine out on, but I did stay long enough to graduate this time, and I, I, I worked in a uh, plaintiff's firm after my second year to see if that was somehow different from the defense firm. Also, not, not as appealing to me. And I, I stuck with librarianship. I applied to several different law libraries um, as I was graduating. Much harder in that day to look for the jobs. There was no internet with all these postings available, so I was calling on long distance and writing down from the AALL um, recording what the options were and applied to several. So that was the beginning of my, my orientation to work after school. I find it sort of intriguing, Anne, that you began in law school, decided maybe this wasn't your thing, mm -hmm. ended up ultimately in libraries and in library school, and then working in a, a regular library or mm -hmm. a general library, whatever right. we call the other kind besides law, um, you then came back full round and returned to law school to complete that credential. And of course now you're, you're a colleague of those of us in our field. In That's law right. librarianship. That's right. Did anyone or any events particularly uh, trigger that sort of coming from the regular library into the specialized law library world? Well, of course, I had the year of law school, and there was an opening for a reference librarian at the University of Alabama Law School, and I did apply for and was offered that job, but I realized at the time, after I'd gone through the interview, that I would be well served in the long run if I had both degrees, the librarianship degree and the law degree. So I declined that, and it was at that point that I applied to go back to law school. So that, that was helpful to me. And then while I was in those latter two years of law school, Robert Marshall, who was um, the associate director at Alabama, helped me by giving me an independent study course on advanced legal research and taught me about how hard it is to do tax law research and um, at the time, we were updating the CFR in print, which was a, a painful, painful process. So he, he helped me a lot, feel prepared, and uh, got a lot of encouragement from the law librarians while I was in law school. I was a, a West Law rep, and so that further linked me with the law library. Mm -hmm. I remember, Anne, that you first joined the University of North Carolina Law School library as assistant director in 1999 uh, after having been at Boston University and later at the University of Miami. Uh, you moved up to director in 2007 uh, when your predecessor, Lala Gassaway, uh, began her service as the law school's associate dean for faculty affairs. In addition, I understand that you have taught not only in the law school, but also in the university's School of Information and Library Science. Uh, could you share a little about the experiences you've had here at North Carolina, and perhaps also a few of the experience from uh, earlier positions that you've held? Well, my experience as a law librarian has been a lot of saying yes to things before I knew how to do them. And, and I worked very hard to live up to the, the expectations that were placed in my hand, you know, the duties I was given, but it, it also served me well. I think that it kept me engaged and gave me new things to learn. When I went to Boston University, my first job, I, I really had no good idea of what I was in for and um, 
enjoyed that very much. It was certainly a culture shock for me to go from Alabama to Boston and um, literally weather <laughs> the, the difference. It was quite cold <laughs> for someone from the Deep South, the heart of Dixie. But I, I learned a lot from the librarians there, Marlene Alderman, Dan Freeling, and Kim Doolin were instrumental in helping me grow, giving me new responsibilities. They asked me to be a point person for the intellectual property faculty, and I had never taken an IP course, so I quickly sat in on courses, learned a lot about copyright in libraries, um, tried to volunteer and did get on the AALL, the American Association of Law Libraries Copyright Committee, so I could connect with others doing that sort of work. And so I learned a lot from that. And then when a position came open for the next step in an administrative line, the head of um, reference at the University of Miami in a warm, balmy climate, <laughs> I uh, did apply for that and, and was excited about moving down there for that position. So at Miami, I had a lot of um, experience in a, a large law library, a busy library with a lot of service to faculty, and was um, promoted several times in that environment, supported by um, the director there, Virginia Thomas, promoted me to the head of public services after a year. And then when she left to become the director at the University of Cincinnati, I was uh, the acting director. So I got some really exciting experience at Miami. I, I often felt like the learning curve was a vertical line, but that was all part of saying yes. And I was able to make some good connections for my career by saying yes when Lala Gassaway, who was chairing the Copyright Committee for the American Association of Law Libraries, invited me to write a chapter for a book that she was editing on the circulation of software by libraries. So although I knew little about the topic, I learned it by taking on the, the research and writing of that chapter. So those things really helped me by saying yes to things that at many junctures I felt were really pushing me beyond my, my current expertise for sure. And then when I this position became open for the assistant director and uh, Lolly Gassaway knew me and invited me to apply for the position so uh, that was what triggered my interest and came up here and then a year later Tom French left to go become a director and so his position as associate director came open and I was promoted into that position so I um, got some new experiences here dealing with budgets I had some of that at Miami and learned a lot about how different each institution is in terms of budgeting. Very, very different. I was at a private institution at Miami, actually fairly straightforward. And at this public institution, we have public money, private money, grant overhead money. Uh, some of it turns into a pumpkin at the end of the year, some does not. We collaborate with the main library system, with the law school. It's, it's a very complex situation, and so that was something that I gained a lot of experience in as the associate director here under Lolly Gassaway. She also encouraged me in areas that I was not feeling comfortable, but pushed to uh, have me propose a course uh, in addition to teaching advanced legal research, a, a new course. Of course, I came here because of the copyright connection, but she had that covered for sure. Um, so I, I looked at a paper that I'd written in law school on privacy law mm -hmm. because librarians have an ethical commitment to reader privacy. So I developed that into a, a course proposal and now I've been teaching it. This is the ninth year and it's been a lot of fun to immerse myself in that area, many areas actually of law, but also seeing where that intersects with librarianship. So that led me to uh, a lot of uh, scholarship, teaching opportunities, speaking opportunities, and it's been really, really fun for me. And then when the opportunity came for the directorship here, there was a, a, an option in the job 
uh, advertisement for tenure or a non-tenure track. Because I had that experience from teaching privacy law and some writing, I felt comfortable, well maybe that's too generous a word, <laughs> not exactly comfortable, but willing to tackle the, the tenure track uh, as the director under the law school faculty standards. And it's been very exciting, been able to balance two different, I think they're fairly different things. One is administrative and management work, which can, not predictable, things happen, you respond, you, you try to plan, you, you think, all these balls are in the air, which one falls first, that's what we'll do then, if that one falls next, we'll do something else. Um, those are really exciting kinds of things that you get to do as an administrator and manager. On the other hand, doing scholarship and teaching, for me, requires some retreat from that sort of wild and, and crazy administration and management. It requires a, a, a deeper sort of um, immersion in a topic, thinking, testing ideas, doing a lot of, of reading, and so I, I had great support here to be able to um, work on balancing those two things. They, I think, benefit each other because I can write about things that are related to my work as a library administrator, and I can also bring to my writing um, things about well, I can work at the intersection of both. And as I, I work in the library, some of the things that I've learned about from reading and writing can help shape planning and work in the law library. So I find it an, an exciting uh, opportunity here, but it comes from saying yes to things I wasn't always comfortable with feeling I could take on. Well, it sounds like you've had some fascinating experiences, uh, and I think prodding yourself and pushing yourself is, is from my own experience, yes. I felt a key to success, yeah. uh, and it makes the job a lot more interesting and challenging, and, and, and that's, that's always, I think, a good thing. Um, you have pushed yourself a bit in other field, in other ways. Uh, you have become a leader in law librarianship, uh, specifically having served as president of the Southeastern chapter of the American Association of Law Libraries, and as chair of the Association of American Law Schools section on law libraries. You have had leadership roles in two library consortia, the consortium of Southeastern Academic Law Libraries in the Triangle Research Libraries Network Council of Directors. I also noted uh, that you were the winner of the 2012 AALL Distinguished Lectureship Award. Could you tell us a little bit about some of these activities and perhaps others that I have not mentioned? Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, these were Many of these were wonderful adventures and took me outside of my own local environment to work with people in different settings and that was wonderful. I met people I would not have met. Um, the, the SEAL, the Southeastern Chapter of AALL, uh, a role involved being a vice president as well as a president, so that meant organizing a whole annual meeting, which was quite an adventure and, and a lot of fun. I worked with a number of librarians that I would not otherwise have gotten to know and we had, had great fun. Um, the, uh, the AALS section is in the larger context, as you know, of a lot of um, folks who work in law schools, not just librarians, but law faculty, law administrators, and so we were working during my tenure there to try to develop a, a call for papers sort of um, tradition so that we could, similarly to other sections within the American Association of Law Schools, encourage and support law librarian scholarship. And just recently Dick Danner and I, at, Dick from Duke Law School, have 
put together a partnership. We're going to start, we hope it will become an annual tradition, a conference uh, for a scholarship to be workshopped on legal information and information law and policy so that we can um, help law librarians develop scholarship in these areas. Because we don't have the traditions that others do of, of giving a lot of feedback in the draft stage and, and having time set aside just to focus on that, that sort of thing. It's, it's my own sense that law librarians have a lot of great expertise to bring to bear on topics. I see other scholars writing and suggesting that the answer to problems, particularly in privacy law, is, well, let's look to the librarians. They have an answer. And we haven't written enough, I think, to unpack what some of those references actually mean. And so I think we, in terms of things like um, copyright licensing, mass digitization, the authentication of uh, primary law on the web, law librarians are so well positioned not only just to be advocates and, and work on policies and practices, but to write about these things as well and advance our, our impact. So, so that's one of the things that AELS took me to, working now in this workshop with Dick Danner and taking advantage of our, our institutions being so close to each other. Also, the consortia gave me, working with this consortia, one was of law libraries throughout the Southeast, and we had some modest but important, I think, contributions to make um, discounts from um, one of our vendors and uh, a no service fee for interlibrary loan and some programs at our SEAL meeting. Um, but that, that was really a good time for us to get together and, and also think about who had special collections on particular topics so that we would all be fully aware that, oh, this is the, the law library to go to if you really need a Caribbean law, go to Miami. Or if, if you have some other area of expertise um, that, that you're focusing on, this is the place for that. And we don't have, not all of us have to do that. That was true at the Triangle Research Libraries Network. It's not just law libraries. It is the, the four major universities in this area. It, it began out of a collaborative uh, effort from the 1930s when we had an earlier economic downturn. And so the libraries in this area worked on collaborative collection development, very consciously suggesting that we can have different areas of expertise and all be the better for it if we share access. So that's continued, and it was really fun to work with that whole group when I was um, chair of the Council of Directors and working with people who have a very big picture about these issues. So those are, are some of the things. Now, the Distinguished Lectureship Award was an amazing honor. It's a fairly new award. I was the second recipient, and I do credit all those times that people have pushed me beyond my comfort level um, for helping me develop the record that probably was part of my receiving this award, my scholarship and, and work in privacy law and libraries. So that's been a terrific honor and then I was able to give an address at the last annual meeting of AELL and I'm working on um, an article related to that address that I will submit to Law Library Journal. So I feel like I'm mid-career and excited about what I've done um, and grateful to all those people who have really kept saying, well, when I was a child, my father it reminds me of this, my father would be in the swimming pool and I was learning to swim. And he would say, okay, swim to me and he would be about three feet away. So I would set out, well, maybe five, to swim. Mm -hmm. And then he would back up while I was already mid, you know, away from the wall of the pool. And it felt like that many times. Okay, come on. And, and it just seemed farther. But, you know, we'll get there. So I think it's good for us to push ourselves. Sometimes law librarians, we're drawn to law librarianship and for many different reasons. But in many ways, we play a, a 
supportive role. But that doesn't mean we don't have great expertise to bring to bear in these larger discussions, too. So I, I believe in the, the saying yes and pushing to grow, particularly as our, uh, our environment is changing so much. Technology, the technology of legal publishing, the merger and, and the growth of new um, publishers have affected us a great deal. The economic downturn is a huge thing. The changes in um, legal curri education curriculum, uh, all major things that we have to we have to be willing to envision some new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you just mentioned a few moments ago that you're mid-career. I think so. Think of all the fun and exciting and useful things you have already been able to be part of and accomplish and then think ahead and dream a little bit, I suspect you have not come to the end of all of this same sort of innovation and being involved and doing significant uh, things. Uh, so I am delighted, Anne, uh, that you have allowed us to visit with you this afternoon. Thank you so much. And taking, for taking these few moments to uh, uh, share with us so much about yourself and our profession. Uh, since it's uh, only polite and, and customary to allow the person being interviewed to have the last say, is there anything more that you would like to add before we conclude this interview? I would just add, I look forward to watching the videos of all the others that you are collecting. I think it's a terrific project and I'm honored to be included. Thank you.